We had many questions about the mysterious bedroll, the, the roll of stuff that you carry on your back when you're hiking, which contains pretty much everything you need for sleeping. So today uh, I'm going to try to explain uh, how I make my bedroll and what it consists of. First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about the, the ground that you might be sleeping on when you're hiking. We usually uh, hike in the mountains where there's not a lot of, uh, of moss, there's not a lot of branches uh, and there's not a lot of uh, pine. Uh, it's called pine, right? No. What's it called in English? Spurs? Spurs! <laughs> so, uh, but if you're hiking in an area where there's a lot of spurs, <laughs> you can uh, lay, uh, pick uh, branches and lay them on the ground just to get you a little bit above the ground to create some air underneath you so the cold doesn't come directly onto your body. So laying down spurs on the ground makes a perfect uh, under mattress. Uh, enough about the spurs. In my case I always use a sun-dried reindeer pelt. We made another vlog post about the pelt so check it out if you're curious to hear more details about them. It's uh, kind of waterproof, uh, so it, uh, when I put this on the ground, I wouldn't put it in a puddle and I wouldn't put it on like wet moss. And it's very good to check uh, how the water is running where you're camping, so don't put it in the water directly. Uh, but it would, will isolate from like wet grass or wet branches or something like that. We also had a lot of questions if it's uh, enough with one pelt for one person hiking. Uh, and of course it is, because your main goal is to keep your upper body and uh, torso um, dry and warm. Uh, your feet will stick out, uh, but you will have your leg wraps. And uh, I know so many tricks for keeping your feet warm uh, when they're sticking out here. Uh, but that's a, that's a different uh, topic, I think. And also if you're hiking with friends, you should huddle together. So that's part one of the bedroll, the skin. Another important part of your bedroll is your blankets. It's summer now and me and Heidi, we're out hiking and we're only about uh, 100 meters altitude. This blanket is quite thin. If you're hiking in higher altitude or, you're, um, or it's colder, if it's a different part of the year, you should have a woolen blanket that's uh, maybe twice or three times as thick as this. Please remember that it's going to be a lot heavier to carry, but it's totally worth it if it's cold. Your blanket should be so wide that it goes one time around your body, and it should be so long that it covers your entire body, and I'll explain why. So you should be laying on the blanket and then having the blanket around you. When folding the blanket for the bedroll, you should fold it so that it's a little bit narrower than the, the skin because the skin is uh, protecting, of course, the blanket and everything else inside from water. So I'm just going to fold this really quick now. also put other stuff in your bedroll if it's important for you that it's dry uh, and if you're not carrying another purse or something you would normally maybe have your um, knife in your belt or something so and your knife is something that you use all the time also your drinking bowl so put stuff in here that you're not going to need until you reach camp I usually put my uh, fire starting kit and my uh, sleeping hat An extra pair of needle binded socks. If they are wet however I will not put them in here then I will put them in uh, my pants on the inside of my belt because that's the way they will dry. And last food. Now we come to the part where we roll the bed roll. <laughs> I usually start with the head so like really really tightly. Make sure that the blanket is not uh, sticking out. Rolling it. Okay, so now I have to keep it 
uh, this way because now there's a lot of straps in stock. This time I'm gonna use uh, different leather straps, just the scraps that I found. Uh, you could also use rope or you could make your own design for this. Uh, I would like to point out that we don't have any archaeological evidence for this. This is uh, something that we uh, figured out ourselves as a what's the best way to carry the bedroll. So use what you have. Uh, we have now just two leather straps and this rim. Yes. I'll just start with looping this, going around, and I'll uh, loop this through. I'm going to try to pull these through. Like that. So I now have a strap to keep the, the everything inside so it doesn't fall out. The tiny, tiny ass is here. So you want to carry it like this. So that when it's raining, the rain's gonna drip off these parts. So you don't want to carry it like this, because then the rain's gonna come in here. This bedroll now consists of a blanket, a skin, and some small objects. In regards of the sleeping shelter, when hiking with this in a forest, you would find sleeping shelter uh, under some branches, uh, you would build something. When hiking in the mountains, however, you also have to include your tarp or your sleeping shelter in the bedroll. It makes it quite heavy, so make sure that you can swap around so that not one person is always carrying the tarp. But me and Heidi, we're now off to find a sleeping shelter. We're really going to enjoy this night and um, good luck with your bedroll and thank you for watching. La di la di la di la di la mai scolco trenco mai scolco trenco mai scolco i blir di morgen gris